Hello everybody, and welcome to my stream. I'm Bogus Meat Factory. Uh, I haven't streamed in a long time. I'm now in a new locale. If any of you actually watched any of my previous streams, I'm in a closet now. Uh, this is my, my actual closet, so you can see these wonderful clothes and things all around. It's absolutely delightful. This is what happens when you have a kid. Uh, my daughter now has new space, so I've been pushed into the closet, which isn't bad, actually. I like it. It's quaint. Anyways, as you see, we're playing Shenmue. I'm going to actually give Shenmue like a super serious chance here. Uh, not a chance. I mean, opportunity to show you lots of cool stuff with it. Shenmue. Hopefully the sound's okay. Uh, let me know if I'm too quiet or too loud, whoever is not actually watching, because I know there's a lot of you that aren't. <laughs> Alright, we're starting the new game. I'm gonna be quiet during the cutscenes and stuff, because it's kind of important. But I'll talk about them afterwards. on
See ya. Four days later. I love this. It's so good. It's so good. All right, so this is Shenmue. A lot of people feel this game is over hyped. That people uh, like it for stupid reasons. The game isn't very good. A lot of people have this misconception of what Shenmue really is, uh, thanks to a lot of different memes on the internet. Shenmue has really been uh, minimalized as being uh, superficial and silly, when in reality Shenmue is a really deep story. Uh, with an amazing attention to detail in terms of world building. Uh, it's something that a lot of people don't don't recognize, and I feel it's really important that Shenmue is a lot deeper than people give it credit for, and is a genuine game that it transcends, you know, a lot of different games. It's, it's one that stands the test of time as being an excellent uh, game in terms of gameplay-wise, as an adventure game and uh, tells an amazing story. Uh, there's a reason as to why Shenmue 3 was backed so adamantly by its by the fans. 
it's because it actually is genuinely good and people dismiss it constantly for not being a game or for being a poorly executed game. I'm going to show you a lot of different features of the game that a lot of people miss, uh, events that people miss out on, and uh, showing you the detail that's uh, put into this game. People don't pay attention to the sheer amount of detail. Uh, so there will be parts where it's me just simply exploring the cities and looking at all the businesses and looking at all the items. I'm not going to go through every single one, but just to give you a sense of the enormity of this game, considering how small it really is. People always say that Shenmue is a sandbox game. And I wouldn't say it is at all. And if so, its sandbox is incredibly small. You can't really do ev anything. Um, you have a linear path. And um, how you kind of come to those conclusions, the, the diversity in how you come to those conclusions is incredibly small as well. Only in a few instances. So, you know, people would like to say that it's a crappy sandbox game, and it's not. It's not a sandbox game at all. It's an adventure. It's you know, a stereotypical adventure game with uh, kind of a fighting game mechanic that's very akin to Virtual Fighter, and that's a, a series that I personally love. It's my favorite fighting game series. I'm a huge Yu Suzuki fan, so uh, it's just something that resonates with me, and that combat system doesn't resonate with some people, and I don't necessarily understand why, but, you know. Anyways, so... Uh, here we are in Gil's room. Uh, you have his notebook here that's going to describe some things. It has a list of phone numbers. Um, you can call the police and fire department, and those can be used in certain situations. Um, you have the weather forecast, which will tell you what the weather is for the day and the next day. Uh, number assistance for looking up numbers, of course. Oops. Now, we're um, also, I want to make a note, we are doing an emulated version. I do own a copy of the game. Um, we're using a PAL uh, regions. Uh, the reason for that is because I do want to do Shenmue 2 and we can carry our character over. All the uh, skills, the fighting skills that he has will carry over his money um, and the toys that he's collected and uh, other collectibles. Those carry over into Shenmue 2 and I just think it's cool. Um, plus also Shenmue 2, there is a mod for it that does the English voice acting and I, I like the English voice acting. So... Anyways, you have the phone number for your home, uh, your friend uh, Naoyuki Ito, and uh, your girlfriend. It's not really your girlfriend, but it should be. Come on. Come on, yo. Get it together. Uh, Nozomi. Oops. Wrong way. Because it's also emulated, you'll see some weird gra graphical glitches. If you saw in the previous um, cutscene, the, the opening cutscene, you'll see like Joe's hair is kind of see-through at points. Um, that's just the emulation. It's not 100% perfect. We try, but... Mirror with dragon design stolen. Landi, murder dad, war dragon robe. Rare fight style, tattoo on his arm. In Moon Swoon, dad killed a man named Chao Soon Ming. What happened that day in the dojo? Well, you were kind of there. So, now we can start looking around. So you can zoom in on items and things like this, like the desk drawer. You see he's got a tape recorder. The Sega brand tape recorder. Tape player, sorry. Oops. It takes some getting used to the controls. Like, you can open up his closets and all his, his drawers and stuff like this. Like, he has, you know, one, two white shirts white shirt and a jean jacket thing and a green shirt with an A. He'll never wear those. It's one thing only. White shirt over uh, his ooh socks uh, and his leather you know, his trademark leather jacket. White shirts! Lots of them! They're, these things are kind of intentional. You'll see that these details aren't just there to fill stuff. They're intentionally there. Like you know, Joe has a ton of white shirts, because that's all he wears. White shirt. Jeans. Like, that's what he wears. You'll see that through everything. Um, and that is, you know, like I said, it's intentionally that. They don't just throw random things in there, except for these magazines. Look at this. Look at this nonsense. Oh. Boy. We're wasting time, but that's okay. 
That's part of the fun. Alright. So we pick up a tape. So the cassette player plays music tapes, which you can listen to throughout the game. There's also radios that you can find throughout the the uh, the world that you can do. And like the lamp. I can turn on the lamp if I want. You don't need to. It doesn't achieve anything. Master System notepads. Um, it doesn't achieve any, anything to do that, but it's still a nice little touch. And here's a picture of him and his friends. Done on Sega Color photo paper. Friends, those you love, keep close to you. That's a theme, you know, friendship and relationships. Uh, especially in these uh, situations of revenge. It's a classic revenge story, and it's told wonderfully in a video game medium. And I don't feel a lot of video games do that, you know? Alright. So let's get out of here. We're going to look around the house first and foremost, but first... Hiyune-san! Allowance. All right. There's some things we have to do. We're kind of constrained by time in some situations because there's some events that you can miss. So we are actually going to try to focus on those right now. Um, first and foremost is this memory. There's a lot of flashback sequences that people miss on the first day. Don't like carrots. <laughs> no. What's up? What's wrong with you, Dio? You see Ines on here. She actually has a schedule. Depending on the day, she has different activities uh, that she does. Now, also, now you can open up all these drawers and cabinets, but there's one in particular we want to look at. I think it's this one. Yep. It's just a cockroach. No, no big deal. Cockroach. Yeah, that only happens like right then and there. You miss it if you don't check it out at that time. Now, like, you can look at all the different paintings and pictures, and you can take the photos off the frames. It's really crazy. We're going to do a tour of the house a little bit later. I just want to make sure that we get these scenes, because you will miss them. First, let's turn on the light. This is his father's room, and there's a letter. <gasps> Mysterious. Die for one's convictions.
I mean, there are so few games that use, uh, you know, camera movement in such a way. You'll see stuff similar to, like, um, Hideo Kojima uses it in, like, the Metal Gear Solid games and stuff. And I think it's a nice touch that a lot of video games miss out on. Mysterious key! We'll find out for a while, I don't think. It's been a while. A move scroll. Twin blades. Pew. So you can find all these different move scrolls all throughout the game uh, that teach you different moves and uh, fighting techniques, which is nice. You can see that Yo's family is Buddhist, and you can pray every day. I'm going to. I get in character. I RP my Dio, alright? He prays every day. is on. Woo! Excuse me. Out the way. Oh, Yenis on. Please move. Please move. So we got two more flashback scenes, and I got to talk to Fuxan. And then there's one other, uh, there's a very important stuff that happens that we have to get to quickly. The cat. You know the cat. We're going to take a more jovial look at this place after the first day. There's the cherry tree. Hold on. There we go. That's where the uh, mirror was dug up. So you see these scenes, right? Um, they essentially serve this purpose to set up uh, a narrative on who Dio's father is, what kind of person he is, because you only see him in that beginning sequence where he dies, and all you know is that he killed somebody. So you get to learn that he's not this heartless killer, he's a father. Oh, there's no game sound? Is there no game sound? Let me check. Sorry. Let me see. Oh, shit. I turned it off. Ah! That's fine. Is that better? That's weird. I swear I didn't turn it off. There we go. Thank you. Luckily there were subtitles. Real son, is everything okay? Don't worry. I'm fine. I want to ask you about that man. Oh, that man. Hey, Mr. Angry Carver. Uh, How are you? The man called Landy. What did he talk with my father about? Landy demanded the mirror. And then they threw me out of the dojo. 
The black suits? Catch the names? I don't know. Thank you. It came out of nowhere. I see. Thanks, Fukusan. Thanks, Fukusan. If you remember anything at all, be sure to tell me. He won't. <laughs> Yosan, why? What you gonna do? Revenge. Yosan, where are you going? You're not going after them. Please don't. Look what they did to Hazuki Sensei. They killed my father right in front of me. They did. I will have my revenge. I need to do this for my father. So we got one more flashback scene, which is in the dojo here. Gonna come back in. The eight principles. Again, emulation, don't mind that. What is he to you? A friend from school. And what is a friend? Well, a friend is a friend. That's right. Just as a parent is a parent. A friend is nothing other than a friend. But listen, Drill. Parents often die before their children. Oh. That's the law of nature. <clears throat> friends will be there for you even after parents die. So treasure your friends. And friends you can trust are true friends indeed. Understood. Mm. Again, that theme of friendship is something you're going to see throughout the entire game. And how Dio was going to change as a person. Because at first he's very dismissive of friends, closed off from everybody around him. Uh, and that gradually changes where he becomes more opened up to it. It's a very slow and overarching kind of theme. It's something that happens that a lot of people, again, dismiss the game series for because they don't get the initial reward. There's all these overarching themes and concepts about the game, and people just dismiss it because it moves too slowly for them. It's meant to be a game that's supposed to be savored and slow-paced uh, to set things up properly, and it didn't get to do that. Um, hopefully with Shenmue 3, it'll give it that opportunity. I hope. But, you know... It happens. Again, we're going to look through the, the areas a lot more closely later. We have stuff to do in this first day. There's a lot that you can miss. Hmm. Kitten! Hey, Hi, Megumi. Hi, Megumi. Uh, you got a kitten in there? <laughs> you promised so cute. not to tell my mommy. Sure. Okay, then I'll show you. Is this your kitten? Uh-uh. But this kitty, see? She's all alone. All alone? Sad. See, the other day, when it rained, a car ran over her mommy. My big sister saw it. She said it was a big black car. A black car? Yeah, and she said it was really scary. And then me and sis, we buried the mommy cat. Oh, sad. So now I can be the kitty's mommy. Oh. But mommy says we can't keep the kitten at home. So are you going to keep her here? Yeah. Everybody's helping out too. Like Kota, Yasuo, and Kayo. I see. Doesn't look so good. Nope. 
think he's hungry? Yep. Wait a second. This is the Fox Temple. Actually, it's a mythological thing. I don't remember the exact details, but they like tofu. But we're giving it dried fish because it's a cat. We're not stupid. <laughs> Do this. So it's easier to eat. She's so tiny, but already an orphan. It's so sad. Yamagishi-san almost got ran over too. Yamagishi-san? Yeah, the car was going so fast, he got shocked and fell. And hurt his backside, so now he stays home all day. Aww. When I go to the candy shop, I always stop by to visit him. Yeah, it's close by there. Megumi, you need to be careful around cars, too. Yeah. Well, I've got to go now. But wait! We gotta think of a name for the kitty! Maybe some other time. Oh, well, when I think of a good one, I'll let you know. You promise? Bye-bye, y'all! Bye-bye. Bye-bye. No, um, and people will make fun of the cat. I don't know why it seems silly this whole cat scenario it's a recurring thing you can take care of the cat and stuff like this and feed it and it tracks that but it's one of those things that kind of showing that Dio is not just out for revenge there that his behavior his want for revenge doesn't you know overtake his human side it's I'm overanalyzing it I'm sure but again I love this game too much man it's so good Let's see, is this lady here? Yes. This is an event that a lot of people miss if they take Excuse too long. Excuse me. Yes. What's this name plate say? It says Tajima. Does it? I'm trying to find the Yamamoto's house, but see my eyesight is bad, so Don't worry. I'll look for it. Wait for me in that park up ahead. You're so kind. Thank you so much. So this event was meant to teach, like you, that you can look at these finer details to put focus on that. Uh, you're gonna see, like, uh, I'll show you. So you can zoom in and, and look and see. This is Tajima. Everybody's ha got a house in the game. Um all the characters and stuff and they'll live and you can knock on their doors if they're home they'll answer if not then they won't Yamamoto that's it guess I'll go get that lady and you can also look at a map there's a, a maps that are around the the town areas that can tell you where everybody is uh, where all the people are and stuff see like right now this is Sakura Park Ma'am, I found it. Did you? Thank you so very much. This is it. Thank you for taking the time to help me, young man. I have to go now. Bye. There are so few helpful young people these days. Okay, now we can take these a little slower. <laughs> those are the stuff that people mostly miss. Um, it's those flashback scenes and helping her out. Um, and you can also miss out on the kitten if you really screw up. <laughs> but you can't. So, Shinmu's known for a bunch of things. Like, for instance, drinking soda. 100 yen. In Japan, it's actually a Coca-Cola machine. Uh, what should I pick? Jet Cola, Orange Fruta, Grape Fruta, Jet Soda, or Bellwood Coffee Original Blend. 
Let's do... Let's go straight up Jet Cola. There's a chance that you can get um, a winning can. Uh, it's got uh, Shenhua in it, and you can turn it in for prizes. Or if the internet uh, aspect of the game is still active, you could use your passport disc, which was a separate CD, um, and you could connect online and turn those in for uh, rewards, like VMU uh, backgrounds and... Um, for character profiles, there is a every character in the game has a, a story or a history about them, and there's some really strange ones, and some of them are pretty superficial, uh, but some of them are highly profound and weird, and it's really surprising that they took the time to do that. They gave them all birthdays and zodiac signs and all that, uh, which is really surprising. Um, and again, something that you don't see that attention to detail for those characters. <laughs> Do you know where I can find some sailors? Affordable quota? Quote, affordable quote. Hi! Welcome to Shenmue! We're gonna buy some capsule toys. Woo! Oh. Get in position, yo. See, the controls aren't perfect because on the Dreamcast controller you had just one analog stick. Which kinda sucks. Yen each. Um, so movement was handled with the D-pad, which is really strange, but the only understanding that I can have for that decision is when doing combat, being able to have the controls be more precise. That's it. But I don't know. Hey, what's this? It's Jackie! Maybe I should get another. We're gonna try the other. I'll pass. Well, you're not really passing, deal. We're just gonna go to the oh, the Abe store. It's open. Oh, no. <laughs> there. I love these. So again, people made fun of this. Maybe just one. This is silly. Why do they have this? And there's tons and tons of capsule toys that you can collect. And again, it's a part of that long-term idea of what Shenmue was going to be doing. Hey, what's this? Hi, Amy. Um, you know, so you could take these capsule toys and get collections of them, and then you could sell them at a pawn shop in Hong Kong, which is cool. Uh, not today. I'm going to the Abbey store, because this lady is a riot. She's an old lady. She's a weirdo, and her history is really weird. Her, her biography that always stuck out to me. What is this, baby boy, do? The day of that incident, did you see any men dressed in black suits? I don't have the time to fool with looking at men. It's true. I see. Did anything unusual happen that day? You again. With me, every day it's the same old routine. I see. You I disagree. Baby boy Affordable deal. quote. It does... Yes. It did age incredibly well. The only downside, again, is that control system, the the D-pad for movement in a 3D environment. It's just, it's a little rigid and strange. Uh, but I think as a story, very much stands the test of time. I'm not playing a real hardware. This is emulated, sadly. I don't have uh, the capture card or anything like that. You can purchase salami, squid legs, chocolate, potato chips, and caramel. Um... But again, it's a game that you have to savor. It's not something that you can like rush through. And I, I think that what makes it stand the test of time is the amount of detail that's in that game. There's a lot of events people miss. There's really great, um, you know, uh, visuals and details, characters and environments that you can you can explore and they open up. Uh, this is a uh, null DC, but. Um, if you go to the, the Shenmue Dojo, there is uh, a person who ha has the Null DC set up with certain settings that make it actually look the best that it can. Um, no, Yuki. Yo! Got a sec? Sure. Hey, is everything okay? Yeah, but hey, on that day, did you see any men wearing black suits? Black suits? No, I sure didn't. 
I see. Any idea who might know about those men in black suits? Hmm. Maybe Sakuragaoka Gossip Gaggle might know something. You know how they're always yakking over near the payphone. Try asking them. Good idea. Ooh. See, this is where the controls fail. Like I said, they definitely needed some work. Controls are the worst. Um. Oh, hello, Ryo. Kondo-san, the day of the incident, did you see any men in black suits? The day of the incident? You mean the day it thundered, right? Yes. I didn't see them. I see. Did anything unusual happen around here that day? Not that I'm aware of. But you know, Sumia-san knows about everything that goes on around here. It'd be good if you tried asking Sumia-san. I see. Yeah, exactly. I can't argue that. Like, when people say the controls need work, they absolutely do. And it is that 100% that Dreamcast controller. Sumia-san. Hi, Ryo. Hi, Sumia-san. On the day of the incident, did you see some men in black suits? In black suits? No, I didn't. But I did see a cat, though. You mean a black cat? Yes, it was run over by a car. A kitten was crying nearby. I also saw little Megumi crying with it. So sad. I see. Was there anything else unusual about that day? Now that you mention it, Yamakishi-san took a terrible spill at the corner by the park. He was trying to dodge a speeding car. Looked as if he hurt his back. He hurt his bottom. Let's get that correct. It must have been going really fast. So, that's what happened. And also, like, people complain about the voice acting, and it is cheesy. It is really... I mean, that's the thing. You had to get so much dialogue. This is an insane amount of dialogue. And I, I get it. Is it, but is that a game-breaking thing? That the dialogue's cheesy, you know? That the voice acting's a little rougher on the edges? No. No. It can be annoying sometimes, like the Goro character, like his voice. We'll see when we get there at some point. It's you, no. How is your back? Yes, it's much better. But how did you know? I heard from someone in the neighborhood that you almost got ran over by a car. Well... It must have been Megumi or Sumiya-san who told you. That driver was insane. Insane! Could you tell me about what happened with that car? Sure. This black car came flying around the corner over by Sakuragaoka Park and went towards uh, Dubuita. A black car? Did you see the license plate number? Maybe if there hadn't been any snow. And to make matters worse, I fell over. So I'd never had the chance. Oh, well, I'm glad to hear you're okay. You know what? That's also a very valid point. You know, um, again, like, I, I always felt that Shenmue was a prologue in a story, you know? So it's something that's kind of setting up for something bigger. You see those action sequences happen a lot more in Shenmue 2, and the quick time events, which people, some people love, some people hate, were executed better uh, in Shenmue 2, and added a lot of diversity and branching paths on how you solve problems. Um, but Shenmue 1, very much a prologue in terms of its pacing. It's, it's setting up this story, um, and there's a lot of rising you know, action, but not a lot of falling action. It's just things are slowly building and not much payoff. Um, and the training it definitely needs fixed. And they, they did fix that in Shenmue 2, where you didn't really need that training at all. And it, what training you could do would be fighting against another person. So that it felt like there was some back and forth. And it was, it was refreshing in that way. But yeah, no, you're right. I mean, Shenmue 1, not the best. Shenmue 2, awesome. Hey, you. Man, jerk off! Go I, home to mommy. We had to. We had to. You have to. You have to talk to them. Um, yeah, Shenmue Two much better. It improves in a lot of different ways that Shenmue One, you know, doesn't have. But again, I feel like it was a 
almost an intentional choice. They make some mistakes. So, uh, this is Dabuita. My favorite place, the Funny Bear Burger Barn. <laughs> it's Funny Bear Burgers, but I add barn for some reason. Oh, dude. I'm going to pause this for a second. Affordable, affordable quote. You need to. When people talk or hype about Shenmue, when they, they talk about what they love about it, what makes them addicted, and it really is almost 100% Shenmue 2, it's all about that mystery. You feel the chase is on at that point. And it's really interesting. And I won't spoil anything because you have to play it at some point. Uh, great twists and turns. A wonderful cliffhanger ending that makes you want to know more. It really opens things up. It's a huger world. There's so much more content packed in. And there is content that a lot of people don't see, even more so than in Shenmue 1. I've played it way too much. I've like I have done all the secret stuff. And it's worth playing. It's worth playing and enjoying. You go initially, just do a superficial playthrough, and then look online for guides, and you're gonna see so much stuff that you miss. And even those guides can't really touch on everything. I haven't seen an online guide that tells you everything, because there's a lot that goes on in that game that you can easily miss or people experience differently. Um, and I hopefully someday they'll do a Shenmue HD on a modern system and PC. If they do that, oh, you gotta jump on it. It's good. It's good. I Two thumbs up, man. Two thumbs up, not one. Hi, Funny Bear Burger. Hi, what can I get for you? I have a question for you. Do you remember the day when the snow changed to rain? Yeah, I remember. Did you happen to see a black car? <gasps> black Thank you for subscribing! Woo! You know that girl over at Ida Flores, Hold on. Huh? That's Mouche you know Dubled? Yeah, I don't know. She was spitting what a name. Because some black car splashed mud on her. I don't know the details, though. I see. I'm glad you're enjoying enough to follow. We're going to beat this game and move on to Shenmue 2 eventually. I'm going to take a break and play The Walking Dead um, Season 1. I haven't done it yet. I got the Humble Bundle. I'm excited to play it. Um, <clears throat> for those that are interested, I'm streaming mostly adventure games, the really, really obscure and obtuse but hilarious full motion video games with live actors. I feel like those are hysterical and people need to see them. They don't think about those games very much. They Like the Sega CD ones and the Sega Saturn ones and a lot of PC adventure games use real actors. And they're horrifically bad in a good way. They're the B-movie that people like don't see. The Mystery Science Theater 3000 style game. It's something you can easily make fun of or find entertainment watching. Um, and just a lot of stuff like No Man's Sky is coming out in June. I'm going to be playing a ton of No Man's Sky. Oh my gosh, I'm going insane with the hype. It's got to me. I'm I'm biting. I'm just I'm just walking around right now. Uh tomorrow in the next game day, I'll be exploring the house and the environments a little more thoroughly. I'm just kind of messing around right now. Tomato convenience store. We have things like Pooh Magazine. Gotta love a magazine named Pooh. And, uh, it's tough to get these things kind of centered. There's a chicken in a bathing suit. Some food. The Statue of Liberty. There's manga. There's Hasso Basso Magazine. You know Hasso Basso. It's a great magazine. I'm sure this says Got Milk in Japanese. Maybe. There's a talking tomato. I don't know what that is. Those triangles, I've never known. Is that like cheese? Yeah. That makes perfect sense, Affordable Quote. It wasn't readily available for the US market. You don't. Have, you shouldn't have to get a, uh, a European Dreamcast to be able to play the game and enjoy it. And the, I only got it because uh, 
my oldest brother when I was younger, he was a chronic game purchaser and system purchaser. We had an original Xbox, he had the game. And Shenmue 2 was where I was addicted. I didn't enjoy Shenmue 1 at all. And I watched him play Shenmue 2 a little bit and I got interested. I decided to muscle my way through it, end of Shenmue 1, fell in love, Shenmue 2 became obsessed. It's so good. Minako-san. Hi, Minako-san. Did you happen to see a black car that day? That day? Do you mean the day it snowed? I do. Yes. No, I didn't see one. I see. See, if you get a winning can in the vending machine, you get a chance to win a prize. And these are all the different prize tiers. There was one uh, time that I've played and three, I got three winning cans and I got the two video games uh, and I also got a jukebox in those three winning cans and I was like, I'll never get that opportunity again. The chances of winning these are so ridiculously low, or so high, that ch the uh, chances are low that you're going to get it. You get fifth place and sometimes fourth place, but first and second, no, no way in hell. Hi, Tom. Tom. Hi, Rio. I heard about your father. I'm sorry. Oh. Have one of my special dogs. It'll perk you up, I bet. I don't want your Tom. Your hot, your dog, Tom. Anyway, on that day, did anything unusual happen? N no, nothing. I see. Well, if you remember anything, let me know. Sure thing, I will. Tom. Hey, Rio, keep your chin up, okay? Try my homemade pickles? They're guaranteed to make you happy. Uh-huh. I'll drop my... I don't want your happy pickles. Um, it's really funny. Like, there's actually the, the funny bear burger guy hates Tom because he steals all his business. And he thinks that it's because of, like, cheap tricks. You can learn this if you talk to him at certain times. It's really weird. This is Nozomi! Hi, Nozomi! Ryo, have things settled down for you any? No. Yeah. If no. there's anything I can do, be sure to let me know. Yeah. No. No. On that day, the snow changed to rain. I heard you were splashed with mud from a speeding car. Yeah. What kind of car was it? It was black, and the kind of luxury car you don't normally see around here. Did you see who was in the car? No, I didn't. It was too fast. But I heard a rumor that Tom had an argument with the people in the car. <laughs> Tom lied to me. Yeah. <laughs> What's he hiding? Why are you asking about that car? Does he know about Chinese people? See you later. Ryo. Hmm? Cheer up, will ya? Yeah. See you. Oh, there is. Lunar um, Snatcher. Hey, Rio. Great choices. Uh, Eternal Champions on the Sega CD is one of my favorite fighting games. It's really good. Far more violent than Mortal Kombat. And people never got that experience. It's something else. I own it. I have lots of Sega CD games. Nozomi told me you had words with the guys driving the black car. No, no, I don't remember. They might have been the ones who murdered my father. <gasps> Your father? Please try to think. All right, man. I'll try. Those guys in the black car, what were they like? I saw a guy wearing this weird coat. What kind of coat? It was a deep green, maybe velvet or silk. Like something Chinese. Ooh. That's Landy. What happened? 
They almost hit one of my customers, so I gave them a piece of my mind. But that man, he gave me this glare. I ain't never seen such a cold stare, man. Do you remember anything else? Nope. Try asking Chinese people about Chinese. Do you know any Chinese? Sorry, man. But see that travel agency over there? They get some Chinese customers. I'll ask around for Again, too, the memes later. surrounding Shenmue are from these like beginning moments. Finding Chinese people, finding sailors. I'm streaming in my closet. Uh, this is my uh, bedroom closet. I am a stay-at-home dad, and um, we just recently moved it from my my bed or my living room. Uh, she just turned one, so she needs some more space. So we cleared out the desks and moved them in here. I'm in my uh, bedroom closet. It's got good sound quality. I like it. Uh, did you play any uh, Sega CD stuff? Affordable quotes when you uh, did you play any Sega CD? Like, besides Snatcher and Lunar, any other ones that you would recommend or that you liked? One game, 100 yen. Darts. I'm very I'll rusty in one. my darts, so we'll see. I used to do really well, now I'm like, I don't remember how to play darts in this game. Oh. Hey, not too bad. Not too good either. All right. Hey, not too bad. There we go. This is the last dart. Ah, no good. Not too bad. All right, a free game. Yeah, I only had the Sega CD because I had a rich aunt and my brothers requested it for Christmas. I'm getting it. And uh, we got it. We got to open it the night before, and we stayed up all night. We didn't get to open anything else but what came with the system, and that would have been the Sega Gems collection, which was Golden Axe, Streets of Rage, Columns, Revenge of Shinobi. Uh, oh, crap. I wasn't paying attention. Soul Dece, uh Soul Feast, sorry. Soul Dece is the Genesis one. Soul Feast, and these really weird... Oh, uh, Sherlock Holmes... Consulting Detective, Volume 1. I am not paying attention. Um, and uh, these weird music CDs and music video uh, CDs that were really weird and trippy. I still have them. Hey, not too bad. We played Sherlock Holmes is the first one. We stayed up all night playing Sherlock Holmes. I was creeped out by it as a kid, because I, I was really young then. Crap. No, no good. Not bad. Yeah, the Sega CD is also like they're really hard to keep in good condition. My one just recently died um, because I accidentally plugged in the wrong adapter to it, the power adapter, and fried it. I can get it fixed to just time, time. Don't have much. All right. This is the last dart. I'm getting it. That was a good game. Over 500 is really good. It's... The best. The best. Wow, man, you're 
pretty good. You won a prize. Here you go. <laughs> That's okay. I mean, I grew up on the Atari Thanks. and the Apple II. I'm an old fo fart, but that's okay. I don't blame anybody for growing up on the, on those kind of si the newer systems. Uh, so yeah, if you get a really good score on the game, he gives you a prize. You get um, a figure of the darts thing. If you do really well in all the games, they'll do it. I'm just going to play one more, uh, which is going to be the QTE title. One game, 100 yen. Show me what you got. I'm never good at this one. This one I suck at. I'll try it. ABXY, okay. Quick time events. Oh, I love you too. I suck at QT battle though. I do suck. Sorry, QT battle guy. QT title guy. That's it. Whew. I didn't grow up on the NES actually. I was a I skipped the NES and Super Nintendo. I was a Sega person all the way through. And see I didn't even get enough to win the the toy. I gotta head home now, it's too late. Inesan will yell at me. Thank you for saying I'm pretty good. I played a lot of Shenmue in my life. <laughs> I played too many video games in my life. I'm not joking, this is like my one hobby. Because, and it's more than just playing games, 
I enjoy like the history behind games, um, the development and everything like that. I absolutely adore games and, and what they represent. Um, a lot of people, you know, discriminate against genres and like, oh, you know, this game sucks, that game sucks. I find the joy in pretty much any game. And it's a rarity on the internet, I think. It's something that should be encouraged more. Is people enjoying something. I do not have a Sega Master System. Um, I want one. Uh, because they don't have much Master System collection stuff. Like online. A lot of people can get away with not owning a Genesis. Um, because you have like the Sega... Oh, thank you, Bobby Games YT, uh, for subscribing or following. I can't subscribe yet. Um, but because people can get away a with getting Genesis uh, games on the big Sega Genesis collections, you know, on like Steam and stuff. But you can't do much for the Master System. They have a couple games on um, like uh, Xbox Live and stuff like that. But that's you know, it's now outdated. Um, I don't want it, especially for games like Fantasy Star, um, and the Alex Kidd games, and even, um, like the Mickey Mouse games are pretty good, too, that are on there. Um, but there's also some that are really bad. I want it for the 3D, yo! They have 3D glasses, some games do, which is really crazy. The, those games back in the day were really strange. They had lots of awesome peripherals, and just such a wild time. The only reason why you should really invest in maybe Genesis collecting with a physical Genesis is just to get the Sega CD. I have a Model 1 Sega Genesis and a Model 1 Sega CD. And, um, like I said, my CD just died on me. Which sucks, but I still have the games. And they work great on on uh, emulator, so I just pop them in my computer and play them from there. If you come home late in this game, Inesan yells at you. That's it. But she will, like, chastise you for being so late. And you can be a bit of a, you know, rambunctious teen. i played a lot of Master System games, though. I have a friend who has one, who's a big Master System person. Oh yeah, Choplifter? Oh dude, Choplifter is a great game no matter what system you play it on. I love Choplifter. We had it on the Apple II and I played a lot of it. I loved it. Tom Hot Dog Truck had words with black car men? Tom saw Lan D and suggested I seek information from Chinese people. I would think that my favorite, what, uh, affordable quote, what is your favorite game system of all time? It can be modern, I don't some people are like, I only like the modern stuff. Totally cool. Like, let's just hear it. I'm glad people are talking. I've streamed so many times and only like good friends of mine come on and talk to me. So it's always nice. Uh, we're going to look at the Hazuki Dojo now. That, or the household. This is their living room. The great living room where there's no... It's a sitting room. Forgive me. Where people just sit. There's nothing in there. You'll never go in that room. This is Fuxan's room. Uh, he's older than Dio, and he's more immature. And you can tell because he has things like, uh, oh, keep your mind as clean as a polished mirror. Wise words. <gasps> Drazer, thank you for following me. I appreciate it immensely. Speak up. People who are hiding in the midst, who are just following, come, come talk. I like people who talk. I... I don't mind. He's got a Virtual Fighter poster. That's Pi. That is Virtual Fighter 4. But we won't judge them that it didn't come out in 1986 like the game did. He's got a lamp. His piggy bank. He's a grown ass man. He's like 21, I think. And he has a piggy bank. Oh, Fukuzan. Move scroll! And there should be one other thing. Let's see. Sure. 
No, he doesn't have anything in his drawers. So yeah, so again, it's these small little details. You know that Fuxan's kind of a childish person. He's not as dedicated in in his art of fighting. He lives here. He's not a blood relative. But you can tell he's not dedicated because like he has these childish things. You know, Dio's very straight up, you know, martial arts. Yeah, affordable quote. I agree. Like, I do a lot of PC gaming now, um, and I have tons of systems. I mean, we're talking so many, you know, from NES all the way up to, you know, uh, Wii U and PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360, and I don't have a w Xbox One or a PlayStation 4, but um, I do lots of stuff for uh, lots of uh, gameplay on my PC mostly it. But my favorite is the Sega Saturn. It's my all-time favorite system because the games on it are games that I still play to this day. I have a huge collection of them. I think they're really some of the best games you can possibly find. And it's again on a Doom system. Uh. So yeah, he has a Sega Saturn in his house. Again, 1986. Doesn't work. Oh, hi, people. I guess you know each other. This is their real living room where they have the uh, TV and all that stuff, which you can't turn on. Oh, shucks. Ine-san. Yes. Hi, Ine-san. Do you know anyone from China? Someone Chinese? Why do you want to know? Oh, it's nothing really. I just have some questions. Well, how about that couple that run the Chinese restaurant? The Ajiichi? Oh yeah, affordable quote. They're really, really hard to come by and really... Um, exp the games are insanely expensive. Uh, if you ever are interested in collecting... This could be food for that kitten. It is food for that kitten. I'll if take you... it to the kitten. <laughs> I'll take it to the kitten. If you're ever interested in collecting or have the time to do so, uh, there are ways to get Japanese ones. Uh, and the Japanese games are so much cheaper, and there's a lot of games where you don't need any Japanese language to know. This is another reason why Shenmue is amazing. It has the thing few games do. A toilet. Traditional Japanese style. <gasps> Yay! Affordable quote! You're following! You find it amazing? Thank you! I appreciate it immensely. I'm new to streaming in reality. I've been, I streamed like once or twice a year for the last two years. Uh, I only finally had good enough internet where I can do something about it. Thank you. I'm going to do it more regularly, at least three times a week. Um, starting next week, uh, for at least for a couple hours, um, what time is it? I'm going to be done in about a half an hour-ish. I might be on back later tonight with a friend of mine. We'll be playing I will get them, father. old school, uh, adventure games, uh, Space Quest 1. And maybe Space Quest 2 if we have time. Which are really great. We'll narrate them because it's fun. It's fun. Those games are so silly. Um, oh, I just have to get here. Do you guys enjoy Shenmue? I'm guessing you're here for the Shenmue. Who isn't here for the Shenmue? Shenmue's awesome! It's the be-all, end-all. I felt like if I was going to seriously start streaming, that Shenmue was going to be the game for it, because it's a game that I've played tons of, and I know a lot about. But the game that I am very passionate to play, um... I really only want to stream games that I really enjoy or games that other people would recommend that share that same oops, uh, share that same kind of passion. Um, because I feel like games need to be experienced as a, uh, as a group. I've played so many games in my life by myself in a solid oh thank you uh, a solitary manner and 
I feel like you should play games with other people. When I was young, I played with all my friends. Even as an adult, uh, when we have friends over, we play all the party games and stuff like that uh, to get people engaged in gaming. And I think that games are awesome. Heaven Dragon Earth Comrade, says this wall scroll. That happens in later on in the game. People don't notice that. They don't notice that that is referenced later on, or they don't even notice that scroll in general. Hey, there's nothing wrong with vinyl. I was going to say, in my closet here, I have the vinyl Shenmue soundtrack, which someone gifted me, uh, ever so nice, a guy by the name of Alien Jesus, who's a wonderful human being. They gifted that to me, and that was the best, as well as some European DS games, which I absolutely adored. Oh, I already got the old key. So this is his house. Um, there's a Go table here in the corner. That's for playing Go. <laughs> and uh, I was just walking around, sorry. I was just kind of exploring. There's um, some items like matches and candles, which you can buy at the store, but you can also find here. Um, place like ine -san's room. It's very quaint. It's very ine -san. Thank you, ine -san. Yeah, but uh, collecting vinyl, good choice. Vinyl is awesome. Great sound quality. They have, um, there's a company in Great Britain, Vinyl Records, um, it's the stuff pre, like, 1980s. It's great. I haven't opened it, but I have a friend who has one, and I've listened to it. It's really good. They also did the Streets of Rage soundtrack on Vinyl Record, and that's just... Seriously, uh, Streets of Rage is just phenomenal. That's a great, the best of the game, like eight bit or sixteen bit game soundtrack of all time. Oh, Book, sir. practicing the move name Pit Blow. <laughs> uh, for my first three years here, Sensei had me practice only the basics. One must know the fundamentals to reveal the essence. Reveal the essence. As my father used to say. Yes, but... But Sensei is no longer here to teach me. He's gone. And I still have so many bad so habits. So many bad habits, Fukusan. Ryo-san! Would you mind showing me the right way to do it? Yeah, of course. Sure, why not? Okay, I'll go first. Take a look at my form and let me know what's wrong. Everything is wrong, Fusan. Everything's like wrong. One step forward, I tense my arm, then strike. Ow! Fusan. Oh. Uh, I'm okay. <laughs> Big CD! You're real, son. Can you show me how to do it right? Sure. But I'm not as good as father was. And so here, like you have the VMU, which actually shows you how to do the move. Uh, but you can, uh, they explained it to you in a way that makes sense, where you do one step forward and strike. So it's forward and your punch button. That's it. Easy. That's great. Your moves are so smooth and powerful. Is it Panzer Dragoon or Panzer Dragoon Saga? Two very different factors in terms of buying. I have Panzer Dra I have both of the games. And Panzer Dragoon Saga. Oh, molto bella. So, would you like to practice some more? Yes, I'll practice some more. Sure. This is a good time to practice. Always a good time. Okay. Let's keep going. So, would you like to practice some more? No. We good. No, that's enough. Really? Sorry. <laughs> well, 
Well, if you ever feel like sparring, just ask. I'll be here. Thanks, Fukasan. Hey, it's cool. Everybody's welcome. I don't mind. They can chat away. I may not speak French, but I encourage everyone of all things. I'm reading all the stuff. I read pretty quick. And I don't mind. Speak French away. I stream at weird times sometimes, and this is a good European time, I think, for a lot of people. Um, they have koi! Hi, koi! People don't see the koi fish in this game. Bonk. Nice little guard herb garden. Original's great, still. I really enjoy the Panzer Dragoon games. Um, the Panzer Dragoon Saga, man, that game is just, it's really good. And it's a shame we'll never see it on a modern console. So nobody will be able to actually play that game regularly. Because it's so worth playing. It's one of the best RPGs of all time. Are you okay? Yeah, I'm okay. but be careful when playing in the road. Okay. Wait up, Yasuo. Wait for me. <laughs> oh, kids. Oops. Once again. Yep, just original dragon. There's the little girl's chalk. Isn't that cute? Um, still great. Pencil Trigger is awesome. Hi, cat. Uh, doesn't that feel good? Are you cold? <laughs> I bet you remember me, don't you? Real cat physics. Spend some of our allowance on cat food every day. You have to. But yeah, man, Panzer Dragoon, the Sega Saturn uh, had that whole series, which was awesome. Panzer Dragoon 2 is really good as well. Um, Tatsuya. Oops, I don't want to talk to you. Do you know any Chinese people? I know one, Son Goku. You can get a Son Goku eraser out of this capsule toy machine. Yay! The little things. <laughs> um, my favorite games on the Saturn: Panzer Dragon Saga. Uh, they have to be like, Saturn Bomberman is really fun with the multi-tap, and um. Dragon Force is one of my all-time favorite games. It's so good. It's a game that stands the test of time. I can play that game a million times over. Let's see. Um, do you have anything for the cat? I don't think you can buy cat food here. Nope. That woman who runs the Abe store... Oh, yeah, it's true. Well, here's the thing. Um... If you have a, an Xbox 360, you can play a Panzer Dragoon Orta on it. It's backwards compatible for it, so you can't actually play it. Um, and that's a good game, too, that a lot of people didn't play because Microsoft very much screwed Sega over <laughs> with Shenmue 2 and Panzer Dragoon Orta and uh, Jet Set Radio Future. Oh, they got shafted. 
but it's a fun on rail shooter. The traditional series, it's okay. It's an on rail shooter. You know, it has some cool aspects to it. Um, but I love it. It's good. Are you a big Japanese RPG person? Because you were talking about Lunar, which is always a great one that a lot of people don't talk about nowadays. Um, Lunar's so good. I played it on the, the Sega CD. We rented it once, and I um, I watched my brothers beat it, go all the way through. Tatsumi-san. Hey, what's up? Hi. You got a minute? Come back later, will you? I see. So I didn't mean to interrupt your hamburger. Um, so we're going to look at some places because it's cool. Go to the fortune teller. People always never go to the fortune teller. This poor lady. She can't catch a break. In Shenmue 2, fortune tellers are important. Because they're, it's really crazy. Don't mean to stop the flow of the gameplay, but in like Shenmue 2, um, fortune tellers, there's tons of them in the game. And all of them tell fortunes in a different way. Some of them are very straightforward in what you need to do, and some of them are really elusive in their fortunes. And they allude to things that will happen in the future games, or much farther also in Shenmue 2, that you wouldn't be aware of. And it's crazy to think about that. Like, I always noticed that uh, much later when I was going crazy um, about Shenmue 2. I loved it. Um, so you liked Japanese ones? Um, what? Okay. I would love to hear. What are your reasons for loving them that are different than other people's? Because I like... Everybody loves games of particular genres. They have their favorites, right? And some people like them for the stereotypical reasons, and it's those weird reasons, those stranger reasons, that make them all the more exciting, you know? It makes them more interesting. I like to know why. Because I'm one of those people that love games for all the weird reasons that aren't usually the normal, you know? I love Shenmue because there's a toilet. And more, but there's a toilet. I love toilets in video games. I need to go through all the games that have toilets and play them. <laughs> I don't know why. It's like it it removes me from the story, from the lore of the game. If they don't have a toilet. I don't know. Call me weird. Excuse me? You seem troubled. I am. Shall I read your fortune then? It's three hundred yen per reading. Let's do it. Yes, please. Well, what type of reading would you like? I'd like a future. Please show me the future. Very well. <clears throat> Rumpf. Uh -huh. I can see it now. Can you? Someone who has lived many years in this town may come to your aid. <gasps> what? I see. Shall I do another reading for you? No. No, thank you. Well then, please come again when you seek guidance. I will. Goodbye. Bye-bye. Learn a new move. I think I can right now. I don't remember the exact timing, but there's a. That's what that future thing was alluding to. Um, was saying that there's a guy who can help me, who lives in, the, or who stays at this park, and he can teach you a special move, which a lot of people miss. Yes, he's he, no, he's not here. Dang it. Yeah, He is, oh, but it's you, no. I missed my time. Your back seems to be better. Yes, it's much better. Um, by the way, did you find out anything about that car? About that black car? I heard that it was being driven by someone Chinese. <gasps> Who's the best person to ask about people from China in this town? Let me think. 
You know that Chinese restaurant down in Dobuita, don't you? The Aji Ichi? The owner of that restaurant is Chinese. Yeah? He's also the chairman of the Dobuita Chinese Association. Yeah? I'll try asking him. No! Oh, dude! Trust me, I own Botan Kaitos on the GameCube. The first one, not the second one. And, uh, it's great. I might, like, um, people, you know, talk about, like, how they love the Fantasy Star Online series. My favorite Fantasy Star Online game is Episode 3 Card Battle. <laughs> uh, no, you're right. And sometimes, there are some Japanese RPGs that are redundant, right? And, like, those ones are the ones that people always refer to as their reasons as to why they don't like that genre. And I think it's unfair. Um, there can be a whole lot of different games that... Uh, hold on one second. Okay, that can be ignored. Um, my phone is ringing, sorry. I should have turned it off. Though there's um, a lot of games like the Tales series, you're right. Uh, those were really awesome. I enjoyed the Tales series a bunch. Um, and I love like uh, Final Fantasy IX. It's my favorite Final Fantasy. I couldn't really get into 7, I know. But I didn't wasn't raised in the PlayStation at the time. I was a Saturn person. And so I didn't have the nostalgia and connection that other people had. Um, some of my favorite Japanese RPGs definitely definitely have to go with the Tales series. Um, and uh, Button Kettos is great. But I really like uh, Final Fantasy IX, Fantasy Star IV... Fantasy Star Force is really good. Um, I prefer kind of the slower pace, though, the turn-based strategy stuff, like Shining Force. I love the Shining Force games. I just beat Shining Force 1 recently. I love the, those games. Um, I have all of them except for Shining Force on the Sega CD, because it's really expensive. Quick timer event. Hey, wait a minute. Hey, Hazuki, you think you can bump into me and not even apologize? Yeah, jerk. Apologize to Enoki-san. Well, maybe I'll just beat an apology out of you. I don't have time for this. Get lost. That's it. Your history. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Bye. Damn, you're pretty tough. I don't have time to play your little games. <laughs> yes, I I'm sorry. You don't mess with me again. Got it? All right, all right. Uh. Hey, are you okay? Can you get up? Nope. Uh. Alright. I'm going to Achi Ichi or other Chinese restaurants. This guy is Chinese. But you should like a Japanese RPG first combat. You would think, right? That's the main game mechanic. You have to like it for that. And if it doesn't have that, it's not as engaging or fun. I enjoy um, like the Xenoblade Chronicle games um, because the combat's a little more fast-paced and I enjoy it. It's different, you know? It depends on the game. Again, like... I apologize for stopping all the time to address this, but uh, there's been... I love the Elder Scrolls series, the Western RPG, you know, I love them to death, but I don't enjoy S Skyrim. I may have plunked hundreds of hours into Skyrim, but I don't enjoy Skyrim. I think it's a, uh, not a good Elder Scrolls game, and it's because, when you talk about story, the thing that made it engaging or interesting and set it apart from other fantasy realms made it not as interesting or engaging. Um, and Japanese RPGs usually have these very fantastical elements. It's sometimes they can get a little too crazy, and then it's like, okay, that takes me out. 
but other times they have a lot of um a lot of uh they tap a lot of japanese uh culture and mythology that's unique to outsiders you know to the american audience that's that seems engaging or intriguing that's that's unique um and when they start to fall into the stereotypical kind of uh, anime tropes, it can be a little redundant. But usually those things happen in the initial start of that game, the first like 10 or 15 hours of a Japanese RPG, and then they open up into something much different. Um, a great example is Grandia. I played Grandia last year for the first time, and I wasn't getting into it at all. And then there are things that started to happen and unfold as I continued with the game and pushed myself to play it that made it very memorable. And it's the same thing with like games like Earthbound was the same kind of thing. Earthbound is a strange game and it doesn't seem appealing initially, but depending on the life you've led as a person, you know, I played Earthbound when I uh, had my first uh, child, my daughter, um, last year and I didn't like it. I tried to play it before that, and I didn't enjoy it, and I stopped. And I played, tried it again when I had her, and being a parent really changed my perception of that game and made it something really special. And it's one of my all-time favorite games because of that. And that's, you know, it's another thing. People can enjoy games more or less based on where they are in their life, how they can relate to certain types of games. A lot of people don't relate to Shenmue, maybe because they want something that's more fast-paced. They want an action movie. They're younger, impulsive, those sorts of things. They're not more um, introverted or, or perceptive. And that's okay. Like, totally fine that a person can do that and like that. But certain games appeal to certain people at certain points in their life. And the more uh, a person can open themselves up to other perspectives means the more types of games that they can enjoy or find reasons as to why they can enjoy them. Um, and that's why I like to stream. I like to play games and share those things with other people because I kind of view games from a wide variety of perspectives and like to show people there are reasons why these games are loved and maybe convince people that you be a little more positive about it and love games, you know? it's It's worth it. And uh, on that note, I am going to uh, end the stream. Uh, I wish I could do longer. I will normally probably do it longer, somewhere between two to four hours whenever I stream. I'm going to try to get a schedule up on the on the profile page, um, the old schedule that I had links to a site, and that schedule is so outdated. It's like over a year old. But uh, I appreciate people watching um, and liking what I do. Um, I'm going to do it more regularly. And I'm really surprised and encouraged to do it more because people are talking. And affordable quote, thumbs up to you. I appreciate your participation. Uh, these streams will also be archived on YouTube, which can be watched. So if you miss something, uh, you can always watch them there and uh, comment. Uh, and I'll participate in a conversation there. So... Uh, thank you so much. I, that means a lot to me. I'm not even joking. Like I, I've spent a lot of time trying to like entertain or engage people in conversation and, and in a, a positive way on the internet. And it's tough sometimes. It's an uphill battle. A lot of people hate, you know, and I think that it's, it's nice. It's nice to hear a compliment. So thank you. Thank you. So anyways, uh, that's going to be it for the day. I may be on later tonight with a friend playing Space Quest 1, but we'll see. We'll see. Probably not. I got to introduce him to VR. I got a Gear VR the other day. So anyways, thank you for watching. Uh, I'll stream more, so we'll talk later, okay? Awesome. See ya.